Hi everyone, my name is Ben, and I'm a dreamer. Um, so this is 388 Barkin Street. It's a collection of 11 sustainable apartments within an adaptive reuse of a circa 1930s brick warehouse. With densification of inner suburban areas an increasingly critical component of good city making, the project aims to create generous and high, a generous and high quality variation of multi-residential housing that could offer an attractive alternative to the suburban family home. As part of our early research, we questioned what an ethical approach for apartment development would look like to produce homes of great amenity, proximity, generosity and craft. Breathe Architecture were, were recruited as collaborators and we focused on a design process that would deeply consider community, occupants and environment. Um, collaboration, was, collaboration was critical to the success of the project. Um, the design was led by us um, in collaboration with Breathe, but we also had uh, Finding Infinity, Freighter Consulting Services, uh, providing ESD uh, consultancy. This is the, the previous town planning permit approval that was on site, and it's just um, kind of what we were up against and what we didn't want to do. Um, long windowless uh, corridors, anonymous entrances, really poor light amenity and poor outdoor amenity. The sustainability ambitions included um, an energy and, and a water strategy as well as social strategy. Um, so in terms of, and some of the, the, the key ideas were passive design, low energy systems to reduce ongoing energy use, facade optimization, harvesting rainwater on site and efficient fittings. Some of the social um, ambitions were encouraging low energy, low waste, sustainable, healthy lifestyles and spaces that harnessed, harnessed biophilic design strategies for connection to landscape. Sites up the western end of Barking Street. Um, it has great proximity to um, existing transport networks, as well as um, uh, Royal, Royal and Princess Park, um, and uh, public transport, walking paths, cycling paths. It's a very interesting bit of shopping too. It's located in a neighbourhood residential zone with a nine metre um, mandatory height limit, and the main Oops, sorry, the main pedestrian access is from the from Barker Street to the north with vehicle access from uh, Spurway Lane to the rear. The rickshaw was originally a textile factory. Uh, using it, we wanted to use it as intact as possible, um, both to continue the, the narrative of the building as a cohesive part of the community, but also to help reduce waste going to landfill um, and the amount of embodied carbon in the project. So the massing strategy was to preserve the existing warehouse shell um, insert a new massing volume, reduce that to achieve a nine metre mandatory height limit, push in um, the setbacks at the upper levels for overlooking, but also in line with the existing planning permit or the, the previous planning permit. Um, we then included uh, a number of voids, so both at the north and south ends and centrally, and smaller voids to create light wells for the one uh, single storey apartments. And overall, this allowed really great light amenity, passive ventilation to 90% of the apartments, passive solar heat gain, as well as um, really strong connection to native land, to native vegetation and large areas of deep bed planting. Internally, the apartments have, the, the larger two-storey apartments have um, double height spaces to in introduce sectional play and help bring light deep into the plan, um, which was confined by the existing warehouse shell. So one of the uh, things we undertook with Finding Infinity was to um, optimise the facade. Um, we looked at various combinations of insulation, glazing and air tightness. And ultimately, um, whilst the glazing and, and insulation was optimised, the air tightness was something that we targeted um, as, it was, as it was able to provide the, the largest reduction in um, energy use. The project has a best score of 71% and a net has of 7.5 7 average. Um, and it was a little bit, it would have been a, a, a bit higher than that has if we hadn't had um, the existing warehouse shell. Some of the key sustainability features, I will, oh, sorry, I'll run through those now. Um, so entry to the project, the main boardwalk with the apartments um, on the ground floor at the front of the site. This is a view through that entry boardwalk with which is quite compressed and it, it has a view through to this central open courtyard, which is now starting to really grow and become quite lush. The bike parking has 27 spaces. It's a, like a bike 
gallery, if you like. Um, it's 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 part of that experiential journey through the through the building, um, and really consciously so. Um, the central atrium space. Previously, the site was fully occupied by a roofed building um, with no landscaping or vegetation, and the completed project has introduced 114 square metres of predominantly native uh, landscaping, which includes 50 square metres of deep head planting, and that's in total 12% um, of the site area. And there's also lots of areas of um, facade for, for climbs to grow up. The waste room is designed for up to weight streams of um, occupant waste on, in during construction. The project um, had a construction management plan to divert a minimum of 70% of, of construction waste from landfill. Um, there's storage rooms on site which are oversized and fully lined to help um, attract you know, a different cohort of people to this project. A plant room with 40 kilowatt solar array um, and an embedded network with 100% purchasing 100% certified green energy. The project also has centralized heat pump hot water systems um, and fully is fully electric with no gas connection. So all electric appliances, including um, induction cooktops and efficient LED lighting. <clears throat> There's on-grade car parking at the rear with EV charges available for every car space, um, a large rainwater tank, and we collect 100% of the water. This was a collaboration done with another design firm to sort of Bring the project out of the community a little bit. Moving up to the to the upper floor, um, there's cross ventilation, excellent cross ventilation. Um, the fins provide both privacy and lateral sun shading. Um, there's no optimized northern there's optimized sun shading to all the northern windows. Sections of both tra wire trellis and fins in the um, on the facades allow for climbers to grow up. Just looking at some of the apartments now with. The kind of the key features being skylights, the internal voids, which I've mentioned, really excellent um, passive ventilation, and multiple areas within the apartments of outdoor space. The material palette is a restrained material palette with um, chosen for durability um, and longevity. Um, also, all the timber is FSC certified as a minimum, and with low VOC coatings, paints, um, and glues. Really, um, a focus on like layering of the views project through the project and views. You, 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 there's that constant presence of the existing warehouse shell and, and still charming views out to the street. Um, the this is the kitchen with uh, the void above, as you can see, drawing attention to the kitchen. Um, all the bedrooms have views out to and connection to, to native planting. There's views to sky in lots of parts of the, of the building. Um, and just moving into the one bedroom apartments, sorry, the single story apartments, there's terraces, the planted courtyards, um, really great amenity given through joinery as well. All the windows are firm, high performance thermally broken windows. Uh, we wanted to reduce the amount of high embodied carbon materials. So um, that's it. 